we'll start and end of my talk. Uh, the next session in here, uh, this is the parking lot tent, in case you're confused, uh, will be Gobbles, the Wolves Among Us. Uh, right now, <laughs> right now you're here for uh, selling out for fun and profit. <laughs> Um, before I even get started, um, I'm uh, Helen back from NMRC. Um, I want to have a little disclaimer here. I'm not coming up here to stir any shit pots. I'm not coming up here to piss anyone off. Um, for any of you that are here to hear me bitch about security focus, you can probably leave now because that's not going to happen. Um, this talk was kind of thought up and during before all that happened, and I've got my own opinions on that anyways. I don't necessarily consider them to be selling out. You know, they've always been a business. And they sold their business. You know, that can't really be selling out. So as I said, I'm uh, Helen back from NMRC. And as some of you also know, uh, during the day, I'm Steve Mamzik, moderator of uh, Vong Watch, um, among a few other things. Uh, the whole reason I've had the NMRC handle, um, basically I used to work for uh, we don't hire hackers type companies like IBM and Ernst & Young, so having the handle was a nice uh, place to hide when I would do my recreational stuff. As far as uh, what I do for NMRC, uh, it's actually pretty fun. Uh, right now I get to wash Nomad's car, uh, mow his lawn, you know, that, that, that kind of cool stuff. <laughs> He, say, he says if I drop about 100 pounds, I can be a cool boy next year. So I'm, I, I got a goal to work for, right? <laughs> okay, this, this talk I'm basing on that this is why people hack. Okay, I'm not, uh, you know, traditionally hackers, at least you know my idea of it, have hacked to gain knowledge, to get into stuff that you know maybe you shouldn't be into, but no one else can get into. You know that, that's always kind of cool. And of course, lately, right, everyone wants to be an internet rock star, right? You know, it's kind of cool to you know go places and everyone knows who you are just based on your hacking. Here is a post that addresses selling out. Uh, this was posted by a guy by the name of Haiku Hacker. I'm not sure if he was here for the con or not. Uh, this was on the full disclosure mailing list. It was directed at a uh, specific person. I won't go into that, but there's a bit of a little flame war going on. Essentially, he's saying that you know selling out's a bad thing, and you know all of us bastards that do it are you know horrible people because we're you know exploiting the true hackers of the world by taking their research and their tools and making money off it. And we have another quote, which illustrates probably the other side of the argument, um, from someone that's probably fairly well known. <laughs> and, and just to get out of the way, I'm a bit biased. I actually do fall into this category of people, um, because you know, if someone wants to accuse me of that's fine, I sell out. I am a security consultant, that's what I do for a living. Oh well, right? What I am going to do today, um, I'm just going to go through some examples of different so-called sellouts, you know, how they did it, um, the wrong way to try and sell out, and, you know, probably some better ways to sell out and actually still hang on to, you know, what little dignity you may have. The, uh, the whole media whoring thing, you know, there's a talk done by Guides at uh, H2K2, um, where, you know, he basically said that bug track is a tool now for people to get famous and get good jobs. I think he even, you know, said that Sturdistic works for Microsoft, which was probably one of the best jokes I heard this year anyways. Um, you know, and he, he was going on about, you know, how vendors use FUD and, you know, and blah, 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 which, you know, some of the, some of the stuff he said, he did have a point, you know, especially the FUD thing and, and the media whoring thing, you know, we, we, we see that all over the place. And uh, that, that's what I'm going to start going through is, you know, just some specific examples of, uh, actually I think I have three, I have an example of someone who you can consider, you know, a hacker slash script kitty, um, a security vendor, and then just a generic example. So this is my first case study. Uh, Robert Little, Pimp Shiz. Don't know if you're here, don't rush the stage or anything. You can talk to me later if you got a problem. So, how do you sell out in this case? You know, you pick something that everyone is worried about, say, oh, Napster being uh, shut down by RIA. Start to face in a few websites in uh, support of Napster, uh, but be sure to leave your email address behind so then the media can contact you and interview the hell out of you. After you get caught and everyone knows who you are, launch a security company. Business might be a little slow, so start again. Pick a new uh, issue, maybe, I don't know, terrorism or something like that, and start nailing websites again, hoping to generate business. Probably not the smartest way to uh, do things. 
my next uh, case study is just basically security vendors in general. And, and this one, I am a bit biased. I did at one point in my career work for Bindu Razor, uh, so I'm not necessarily saying this is a bad thing. Uh, there are some areas where security vendors do definitely go wrong, though. Uh, so the basic premise behind, you know, we've got our X-Force, we've got our Razor, we've got, I don't know, probably another dozen or so vendor research groups. You know, they'll go on, they'll hire as many big name, uh, you know, black hat, white hats, you know, if you're smart, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. They'll go and hire as many of those guys as they can. Um, then they'll just start pumping out as many advisories as they can. And of course, in those advisories, you've got all the web links and, you know, all that stuff for the products. That's not necessarily a bad thing, really. Where they seem to go wrong is when they start putting press releases and PR in front of actual research and working with vendors. We've seen cases of that. You know, we can use X-Force's Apache thing. Um, you know, I know there's two sides to that argument as well, but the bottom line is they didn't work with Apache. You know, they, they rushed an advisory out. Some say they did it for the marketing. I would tend to agree with that. I'm going to go faster. So I'm calling this one a better way to sell out. I, I wouldn't say it's a better way, but I figure this is probably the way, if you are going to sell out, you should do it, because I, I, there's a lot of good reasons to sell out. You know, jo a job is one of them. You know, I'd, I'd definitely rather be working in security than flipping burgers for, you know, eight bucks an hour. So probably the good way to do it, you know, just do, do what you already do. Go out, do your advisories, publish white papers, you know, don't get caught doing anything wrong. You know, don't don't get your criminal record. You know, we call, we can all remember the case a while back. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was trying to get a job with one of the new boutique firms, and they turned him down when they found he had a record. And so, of course, he went to the press bitching about that. But really, you know, what do you expect, dude? You know, they do a background check. You've got a criminal record. None of their clients, who also will ask for background checks, are going to want to touch you. You know, it's just kind of common sense there. Um, you know, and. Sure, sell out, take your job, you know, make your money, but continue to do what you're doing and continue to, you know, support the community and release your tools and release your exploits. I think that's where the real difference between selling out and not selling out is, is, you know, you'll see guys who I would call true sellouts go and try to be something they're not, right? They'll all of a sudden go from being, you know, hacker to, what are you talking about? I don't know what hacking is, you know, and, and keeping all of their tools and exploits and research to themselves. You know, sure, you know, you can call those guys sellouts. You know, the guys that continue to support the community and continue to, uh, you know, dump their exploits in and things like that, I don't consider them sellouts at all. They're just using something they're good at to make money. And really, what's wrong with that? The real reason, I think, anyways, you know, this is mostly my opinion and probably a few other people's opinion, but I think the real reason that we see guys like, you know, me and, you know, you can lump the loft guys or all kinds of guys like that into this category being accused of being sellouts is we've got groups, you know, like Guides Talk, right, and the EL8 guys. I, I don't think the anti-security guys really belong on this slide. Um, they, uh, they're they more anti-full disclosure, you know, because they think they're supplying script kitty munitions than, you know, than they are anti-sellout. Um, but, you know, you've got a lot of guys that don't want guys like us who actually know how to research and actually know how to hack they don't want us to go out and secure networks. They don't want us to go out and release our research. How are their zero days going to be effective when they're going up against some guy that can, is just as good, if not better, than they are? Media. I do want to address the media a little bit because they seem to uh, feed into this whole thing. Uh, hi, Thomas. <laughs> um, this is a quote that I took off of a uh, email that uh, I and a few others received. I'm not attributing it to anybody because it was a private email. Um, but I think I think this is probably valid for all media organizations at one time or another. I think we could probably accuse almost everybody in the media of, at one time or the other, saying or doing something that they, uh, that, that was wrong, that they didn't research. Um, so I do have a few pointers or guidelines for the media to uh, consider when they're reporting on stories. You got a pen, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, right, is that the, the media seems to grab what's sexy, what's cool, and, and they don't like to research it, right? Like, they'll just go and, oh, man, this guy just said that, uh, you know, simple note, that's a fed, quick, get that on the front page, you know, of whatever website. You know, and really you need to, uh, you know, research that kind of stuff. 
<laughs> Sorry, I didn't need to mention Simple Nomad. He is not a fed. Uh, <laughs> You know, essentially, you know, this, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and read slides to you guys, but essentially this is what the media can do or, you know, should be doing, you know, and, and the big thing is don't spread FUD. You know, check, check your sources, reveal your sources. You know, there's this thing called anonymous source that, you know, I've been an anonymous source many times that I've had to be, and I, I know a lot of people probably have, and many media guys are pretty good at protecting their sources and still proving a point or proving their story. Um, the last one is probably my biggest pet peeve. Just because somebody uses a computer to commit a crime doesn't mean they were a hacker. You know, yet the media, oh my god, you know, there's a palm pilot in this guy's pocket when he robbed the bank. He must be a hacker. You know, it, it, it's just getting out of hand. I wanted to uh, address hacktivism a little too. And uh, I call it the lone gunman myth. And the, and the reason I say that isn't because I'm against hacktivism. I'm, I'm actually all for it. Um, it's just the real problem is, is we're not seeing it yet. You know, we're, we're not seeing any real hacktivism yet, at least in the media. You know, all we're seeing in the media is website defacements and, you know, denial of service attacks and, you know, silly stuff that no one really cares about. You know, I would probably say that most of the web defacements probably aren't really read by anybody. Um, and, and if they are, I don't think they're getting the point across. Um, I think it would be real cool to, you know, see things like, you know, th there, there have been a few talks this, you know, this weekend about hacktivism and some of the things you can do, helping to build tools, helping to secure not-for-profit boxes. You know, why not? Ha you know, why couldn't someone have hacked into Enron a year ago and exposed what they were doing? I think a lot of us or a lot of people would have saved a lot of money. You know, and that slide's basically what I just said. Anyways, you know, like we're all sitting around arguing, you know, with the ELA guys or Guides or whoever, when really most of those guys actually, you know, know their stuff and are pretty good. So instead of sitting here, you know, fighting amongst ourselves, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's start doing something, you know, like building the cool tools or helping the not-for-profits and stuff like that. I'm uh, going through this pretty quick. Okay, um, we're going to go to something that kind of doesn't fit in here at all. Um, you guys want to... You guys want to come up here or what? Yeah, I'll see you guys. way too fast. We're actually already getting close to the end. I brought all these guys up um, because during Black Hat uh, and uh, yesterday during DEF CON, we did announce something new. Um, and so I thought I'd you know, bring these guys up to talk about it a little bit as well. Um, doesn't really fit with the whole selling out thing. Um, but essentially what we announced at Black Hat was the Internetwork Security Information Services Initiative. Um, and what that is, is it's going to be an open source uh, volunteer supported centralized information source. Um, you know, the, the data is going to be free, not free. Oops. Um, <laughs> well, it's probably supposed to be an explanation mark, I'll bet. Uh, and, uh, you know, we announced a, a new discussion list called uh, Volun Discuss. Um, as far as volunteers involved with ISIS, we have uh, the guys from Pakistan, who you see a lot of them up here, um, and the Open Source Vulnerability Database Project, which uh, Charles is going to say a couple words about. Hi everyone, I'm Shaul, I'm from Saints Post. Um, I was asked just to say a few words about the Open Source Vulnerability Database Project. Uh, basically what happened is the uh, guys from Digital Defense and some of the guys from SensePost, we've been building databases of known vulnerabilities essentially based on the Nessus um, signature IDs over the last few years and uh, Digital Defense and SensePost have come together uh, to launch a project together with these guys to make that database publicly available. So we'll be moving it off our infrastructure into, into public domain. It'll be run under the charter of the, of the rest of the project, so it's going to be completely open source, completely free. Uh, it will be moderated, so it's not a discussion list. It's a, the idea is to have a high quality database 
of, of really accurate, up-to-date information. Um, and what we'll be doing is we'll be making it available in such a way that you can do complete, probably CDS dumps of, of the database. So anybody who wants access to it, you'll be able to connect to the servers and, um, and pull the whole thing down. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, visit the website. Maybe just a, a quick note on, on, on where we are. The website is up. Uh, we're busy forming the, call it the coalition and, and establishing the charter and stuff like that. Uh, we're also busy finalizing the technical details of the database structure, exactly how we're going to mirror it, how we're going to push the data down. Um, and as soon as we do that, we'll, uh, we'll go live with the data. And we expect to have a database of, in the region, I think, of about a thousand or so uh, entries when we start. So there's going to be a lot of good stuff there. And the rest of it will really depend on you guys. So uh, drop in, visit the site. And um, and support us in what we're doing. So I uh, just realized I blew through my entire talk in about 20 minutes. So I'll probably win an award for the worst talk at DEF CON, but, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> they do have. Uh, Gobbles coming up next to do his uh, Wolves Among Us talk. Um, my talk's not really geared too much for questions, probably geared more for flames. Yeah, yeah. And actually, that's one thing that these, that these guys missed to cover. Um, the ISIS project is looking for volunteers, um, especially if you have a vulnerability database laying around somewhere that you don't want or you'd like to release to everybody. Um, SensePost and Digital Defense already donated a couple. I think there's something like over a thousand records. Is that right, guys, in there? Um, but hey, the more help, the better. Um, Oh, hang on there. Ah, crap. Um, I really didn't want to have to go up here and talk. Um, we at uh, Packet Storm, no, all the Packet Storm guys, you know, raise your hands and wave at the crowd. Oh, Say hi. That's Christian and Alan and I'm Emerson. Um, at the moment, what we're trying to do is uh, um, we, uh, we have a whole bunch of files which don't have descriptions. Um, there are, in fact, a few, more than just a few files. There are a few thousand files that don't have descriptions, you know, the old stuff. Um, and we need some help classifying it all. So uh, at some point in the near future, you know, we'll uh, be uh, you know, sticking something on the site. And uh, we need your help, basically. You know, like if you can read... Hands up here, who can read C? Stick your hands in the air. Okay, give yourselves a pat on the back. You've got yourself a job. Um, so, you know, we'll be doing that. And of course, we'll uh, be busy... Uh, um, you know, we'll also be uh, helping support the uh, open source vulnerability database guys and uh, all the other bits and pieces that go along with this. And of course, you know, all you people out there who are, you know, busy developing your tools and lights, you know, uh, send us your stuff. You know, we want to have friends, Romans, citizens. You know, send us your wares. So you know, uh, bring it on. Um, that's basically it. Yeah, back to Steve. Um, yeah, so essentially ISIS is going to be, you know, volunteer ran, it's going to be free. I think the key point behind this is that the data will remain free. Um, it's going to be a not-for-profit, and uh, you'll be able to dump all the data any way you want. It's a not-for-profit. Yeah, sorry, never-for-profit. Thanks, Emerson. So yeah, so like I said, I'd probably get the award for the shittiest talk at DEF CON, because I blew through, blew through that real quick. Um, I'm not going to take questions, because I know you guys are probably going to, or some of you are probably going to flame me, so if you do want to come up and talk to me, Feel free to come on up here and talk to me at the end of the talk. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, someone want this? Come get it. <laughs> it's free. Okay, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a question here, and then you can take some free hardware. I'm, I'm glad I took that one. Essentially, he was asking, you know, say you're an Enron employee, you're making six figures. How do you fight not selling out, you know, to expose that there's something bad going on? Yeah, then, you know, I, uh, I think that's a tough one, right? And I think everyone will make their own 
personal decision on that. And, and, one, and one of the questions to ask yourself is, what do you do? You know, you're a sysadmin or a security guy of a corporation, and you know they're doing something wrong. Do you protect that data? Do you not protect it? Or do you expose it? You know, that's, I think that's a personal question everyone has to ask them. Obviously, I'd encourage you to expose them. Um, I know in the U.S., I'm a Canadian, so I'm not completely familiar with a lot of the U.S. laws, but I know some of the states have, like, whistleblower laws and, you know, and things like that that you can protect yourself. Um, or do it anonymously. You know, find a guy in the press that you trust and uh, feed him all the information anonymously, hoping that he'll protect your identity. It is a HP Hub Plus. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm too young to know what those connectors are in the back, so. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, like I said, next up we've got Gobbles talking about the wolves among us. Um, if anyone does have any questions or comments or you know, wants to come punch me in the nose, feel free, come on up.